Subject of Atomic Physics, Lecture Number 12, Same Molecules, Lecture Plan, Ionic Bonds, Covalent Bonds, Molecular Spectra, Rotational Spectra, Third, Vibration Rotation Spectra, Fourth, Electronic Spectra. From one point of view, a molecule is a stable arrangement of a group of nuclei and electrons. The exact arrangement is determined by electromagnetic forces and the laws of the quantum mechanics. This concept of a molecule is a natural extension of the concept, concept of an atom. Another view regards a molecule as a stable structure, formed by the association of two or more atoms. In this view, the atoms retain their identity, whereas in the first maintained view, they do not. Of course, both views are useful and there are situations wherein each is directly applicable. In general, however, the structure and properties of molecules are best described by a combination of both views. When a molecule is formed from two atoms, the initial electrons of each atom remain lightly tightly bound to the original nucleus and are barely distributed at all. The outermost loosely bound electrons, known as the valence electrons, are influenced by all the particles, ions plus electrons, of the system. Their wave functions are significantly modified when the atoms are brought together. Indeed, it is very interaction that leads to binding, it is to a lower total energy, when the nuclei of ions are close together. This interaction, called the interatomic force, is of the electromagnetic origin. Hence, we see that the valence electrons play the central role in molecular binding. There are two principal types of molecular binding, the ionic bond and the covalent bond. The natrium molecule is an example of ionic binding of, and the hydrogenium molecule an example of covalent binding. Consider the formation of a natrium molecule from an atom of natrium and an atom of the chlor chlorium, which are far apart initially. It is known that to remove the outermost outermost 3s electron from natrium and form the natrium plus ion requires an ionization energy of 5.1 electron volt. The atomic binding in the alkali natrium is relatively weak because it is filled in the subshells, are effective in shielding the valence electron electrically from the nucleus so that it moves in a weakened field on the outing position. And now we attach this electron to the halogen chlorium atom it will complete a previously unfilled 3p shell in chlorium to form a chlorium ion. The halogen has a relatively high electron affinity, that is the closed shell ion is more stable than the natural atom, its energy being low, lower by 3.8 electron volt. Hence, at the cost of 1.3 electron volt of energy 5.1 electron volts minus 3.8 electron volts, we have formed two distinct uh, separate ions, natrium plus and chlorium minus, but these ions exert extractive Coulomb forces on the another, and the energy of attraction is greater than 1.3 electron volt. Now, since the mutual Coulomb potential energy of the ions is negative, the potential energy of the combined system initially decreases as the separation of the ions is steadily reduced. As the ions are brought still closer together the electron charge distributions begin to overlap. This has two effects, each of which increases the potential energy. First, the nuclei are not as well shielded from the another as before and they begin to repel one another. And second, at small internuclear separation we effectively have a single system to which the exclusion principle applies and some electrons must be in higher energy states than before to avoid violating this principle. The potential energy curve therefore wields a repulsive force at small interatomic separations and on attractive force at large separations. 
there is a separation at which this energy is a minimum the energy being 4.9 electron volt lower at this proximity that for distance separated ions hence compared of two neutral atoms natrium plus chlorium the combined system natrium chlorium is lower in energy by 3.6 electron volts that is E equals 1.3 electron volts minus 4.9 electron volts equals minus 3.6 electron volt. So that the bound state is energetically favored as illustrated in figure 1. The equilibrium nuclear separation in natrium chlorium is 2.4 angstrom. Figure number 1 the energy for the neutral atoms natrium and chlorium and for the ions natrium plus and chlorium minus as functions of the inter-nuclear separations are. Natrium chlorium is a molecule held together by ionic binding. Because the region of positive charge natrium plus and the region of negative charge chlorium minus are separated, there is a permanent electric dipole moment. An ionic molecule is thus said to be a polar molecule. Ionic binding is also called heteropolar binding. Ionic bonds are not directional, for each ion has a closed shell configuration which is spherically symmetrical. Ionic bonds can be formed with more than one valence electron, as in the case of magnetium flow second molecule, when the molecular state is energetically lower than the state of separated atoms. The number of ionic bonds that an atom can form depends on the shell structure of the atom. It is on the ionization potentials for successfully removing electrons. It will be energetically favorable to form ionic bonds only for those few outer subshell electrons that have ionization potentials in certain ranges. Compounds of elements from the first column and the second from last column of the periodic table, the alkali halides such as Calium fluor, lithium bro, etc. are ionic, as are many of these from the second column and the third from the last column, the alkali is oxides, sulfides, etc. Covalent bonds. Let us consider now the formation of the heterogeneous second molecule. In this case, the Hydrogen second, we were to calculate the energy required to form positive and negative hydrogen ions by moving an electron from one hydrogen atom to the other, and then added to this the energy of the Coulomb interaction of ions. We will find that there is no distance of separation at which the total energy is negative. That is, ionic bonding does not result in a bounding bound hydrogenium second molecule. The fact that hydrogen second is bound is explained quantum mechanically by the behavior of the electronic agent function describing the charge distribution of the system as two hydrogen atoms approaches and on us. As we shall see soon, the resulting charge distribution does lead to electrostatic attraction, but is a charge distribution that can be interpreted as a charging of electrons by both atoms. The binding is called covalent. We can best understand the covalent bond by stating first the simple case in hydrogen second, the hydrogen molecular ion. In this case, we have two nuclei each exerting a Coulomb repulsion on the other, and both exerting a Coulomb attraction on the single electron. Since the electron motion is very rapid compared to the nuclear motions, the pressure there is known to assume that the nuclei are at rest at a distance, are apart with a single electron moving in their column fields and then determining the electron energy from the Schrodinger equation. We next set R as a variable and consider both the electron energy and the internuclear column repulsion energy as a function of the internuclear separation. The total energy of the system is the sum of these two energies and the system will be bound in if the total energy exhibits a minimum at some value of internuclear separation. The top of figure 2 indicates the potential energy in which the electron moves by plotting its value along an x-axis passing through the two nuclei, 
for internuclear separation R equals 1.1 angstrom. The potential energy is symmetrical with respect to a plane perpendicular to the line connecting to the two nuclei and passing through its middle, since the potential is just the sum of the column potential centered on the end on that line and on the equal column potential centered on the other end. Figure 2. Top the potential function and the two lowest energy levels for electron in hydrogenium second molecule with internuclear separation. R equals 1.1 angstrom. Bottom, the even and odd engine functions corresponding to the two energy levels evaluated along the internuclear line. Because the motion of the electron in a bound state of this potential will have the same symmetry, the electron's bound state probability density C asterisk C will have equal values on two points on either side of the plane and equidistant from it. But this requires each of the its agent functions zero to have either precisely to the same value at the two points, or else to have a point and a value precisely to a negative of its value at the other point. That is the agent functions must be either even or odd with respect to reflection in the plane. The situation is shown systematically in the bottom on figure 2 by plotting the lowest energy even and odd normalized agent functions along a line passing through the two nuclei. The important idea is that the odd agent function must necessarily have zero value at the center of this line since it obeys the equation p function of minus x equals minus c function of x, which will oversize the p internally inconsistent at the center where x equals 0. But the even engine function is not so constrained and thus, thus is, has an expressible value at x equals 0. Figure 3 shows the sum of the electron energy and the antinuclear column propulsion energy for the two lowest energy states of the hydrogenium second molecule as a function of internuclear separation distance r. For very large r, the electron will be to one nucleus or the other in the lowest energy state of the hydrogenium atom, and the repulsion energy will be negligible, so the energy of the system will have the familiar value minus 1,3. 0.6 electron volt. For the quantum states with the even engine function, the energy of the system at first decreases with decreasing R. The reason is that the binding energy exerted on the electron already near one nucleus becomes negative more rapidly as the other nucleus moves into proximity. Then the repulsion energy between the two nuclei becomes positive. Figure 3. The total energy of the its second plus molecular for the two lowest electron energy levels as a function of the internuclear aspiration. As the internuclear separation continues to decrease, the energy of the system passes through a minimum and there begins to increase rapidly. This happens because the electron binding energy when the nuclear overlap can become no more negative than the minus two to, to power multiplied 13.6 electron volt equals minus 54.4 electron volts, the ground state energy of the single ionized helium atom, whereas the internuclear repulsion energy increases without limit as the internuclear separation decreases. For the even engine function case, the molecule is stable bound by a rudimentary covalent bond. At equilibrium, it has R approximately equals 1.1 angstrom, which is the energy as a function of R has a minimum that is about 2.7 electron volt T. The measured binding energy is as the energy required to dissociate hydrogenium second plus into hydrogenium and hydrogenium plus is in good agreement with this value because of the significantly weaker binding of the electron in the odd engine function state, 
the corresponding total molecular energy curve does not have a minimum at any value of R. Thus, the molecule will not be if the aging function of the electron is odd since its energy always decreases as the nuclear separation increases. Because of the complete space overlap of the wave functions of the indistinguishable electrons in hydrogen second, it is definitely not possible to associate a particular electron with a particular atom of the molecule. Instead, the two electrons which are responsible for the bond that holds atoms together as a molecule are shared by the molecule or shared by the bond itself. This is the idea of the shared pair of electrons with antiparallel spins that form a covalent bond. Note that if the two electrons had essentially parallel spins, they could not both be in the region between the two nuclei. They, then they could not both that where the optimize the attraction accepted of them by both nuclei. If you imagine trying to form hydrogenium second by bringing two separated hydrogenium atoms together, it would make a decisive difference whether the electron spins were parallel or antiparallel. In figure 4, we show the prediction of quantum mechanics for the total energy of the system as a function of internuclear separation in the two possibilities. Binding it is, is obtained only for antiparallel spins. The calculations that produce the proofs in figure 4 take into account the electron electron repulsion. This has a quantitative effect in reducing the binding, but it does not make a qualitative change in the description we have presented on the origin of the covalent bond. No more than the two electrons can form one covalent bond. We say an electron from one atom pairs up with an electron of antiparallel spin from another atom. If an atom has several electrons in the uncompleted or outer shells, it is if it has several valence electrons which may try to form a covalent bond with a valence electron is a nearby atom. Figure 4. The total energy of the hydrogen second molecule for parallel and antiparallel electron spins as a function of the internuclear separation. However, if there are two valence electrons with antiparallel spins in one atom, an additional valence electrons from another atom will not success in forming a bond with either of the since they are already paired with each other. That is, if the spin of the addition electron is antiparallel to spin of one of these electrons, it is parallel to the spin of the other. Since the exclusion principle acts in the molecule in such a way as to prevent two electrons with parallel spins from having the same space agent function. The additional electron may not occupy the same energetically favorable molecular region as the electrons of the pre-existing pair. Therefore, the valence electrons of atoms that are effective in forming covalent bonds are those which have action of the exclusion principle in the atom has not already forced into pairs with the antiparallel spins. For instance, in the hydrogen theory, all of the three 2p electrons in hydrogenium can have parallel spins because there are three possible values of the quantum number m sub l for l. As in ionic binding, the forces saturate in covalent binding. That is, the given atom strongly interacts with only a limited number of other atoms. Saturation is due to the limited number of the electrons or vacancies in the outermost occupied subshell of the atom. As distinguished from the ionic bond, the covalent bond is directional. The directional property is not present in hydrogenium second since the probability density of the valence electron in each separated hydrogenium atom is spherically symmetrical, so the only defined direction of the hydrogenium second molecular is the one connecting to the two nuclei, and the covalent bond acts along the direction, where, whatever in it may be. In a more typical case, the probability density of valence electrons has its own directional dependence. 
and the certain preferred directions for forming covalent bonds. The directional properties of covalent bonds are manifested in the structural properties of covalently bonded molecules and so form the basis of the organic chemistry. The charge distribution of the paired electrons in the covalent bond has a symmetry about the center of the molecule. As we discussed in the case of hydrogenium second, so this, there is no permanent electric dipole moment associated with the covalent bond. The bond is therefore sometimes called homopolar because the binding in molecules other than those containing two identical nuclei may be partly ionic even so principally covalent only molecules such as oxygenium second or nitrogenium second are strictly homopolar. Molecular spectra. Molecules can remain bound in excited states as well as in the ground state. The emission and absorption spectra of the molecules are due to the transitions between a lowered energy states. The energy level SAM is relatively complicated and differs in many respects from the atomic case. For one thing, we can no longer classify states according to the electron orbital angular momentum, because the force on the electron is not a center force in a diatomic molecule. E.g., there are two separated nuclei attracting centers. The magnitude of its orbital angular momentum L is no conservative. The energy agent functions are not agent functions of the operator L. Optical to power. However, in the di diatomic molecule, the total charge distribution is symmetrical about an axis connecting to nuclei, say the Z axis so that the component of angular momentum about this axis L sub Z is conserved. We find then that the molecular energy agent functions are agent functions of L sub Z sub optical that and that L sub Z has a load values with integral multiples of H bar in the energy of the values L sub L multiplied H bar of atomic states. Another difference between the molecular and atomic cases is that we could neglect the nuclear motion in the atom, or else we could take it into account easily by using the reduced electron mass. Of course, in a molecular as well as in the atom, we do not need to consider the translation motion because this, that motion being three particle motion is not quantized. However, the nuclei in the molecular can move relative to one another. In a diatomic molecule, for example, the nuclei can vibrate about the equilibrium separation, and in addition, the whole system can rotate about its center of mass. The energy on each of these motions, vibrational and rotational, is quantized so that they expect many more energy levels in the molecule than in the atom. Indeed, these motions are interact or couple with one another, and its exact analysis would have to take this into account. Of course, the solution of Schrodinger equation for any but simplest molecules is very difficult. However, empirical results of molecular spectroscopy show that they can consider the energy of molecule to be made up of three P principal parts, electronic, vibrational and rotational. The molecular energy levels fall into widely separated groups each group being said to correspond to different electronic state of the molecule. For a given electronic state, the levels again fall into groups separated to nearly equal energy intervals. They are said to correspond to successive states of vibrational of the nuclei. Within a vibrational state, it is a fine structure of levels ascribed to different states of rotation of the molecules. This level structure suggests that we can obtain approximate solution of the Schrodinger equation by separating of the three, three equations, one describing the motion of the electrons, one the vibration of the nuclei, and one of the rotation of the nuclei. In the next approximation, we can take into account the coupling between the electronic and the nuclear motions, such as between the electronic angular momentum and the rotation of the molecular and the coupling between the nuclear vibrational and rotational motions. 
The spectrum emitted by molecular can be divided into three spectral ranges, corresponding to the different types of transition between molecules and quantum states. As a far infrared, we observe the rotation spectra corresponding to radiation emitted to in transitions between rotational states of a molecular having an electric dipole moment. In the near infrared, we observe the vibration rotation spectra corresponding to radiation emitted in vibrational transitions of molecular having electric dipole moments, within which there are no there are changes in the rotational states as well. In the visible and ultraviolet part of the spectrum, we observe elect electronic spectra corresponding to radiation emitted in electronic transitions. The electronic vibrations undergo many cycles in the times required for the nuclear configuration to change, this being the physical reason that permits us to separate the agent function into electronic and nuclear factor to begin with, so that the electronic spectra have a fine structure determined by the rotational and vibrational state of the nuclear during electronic transitions. In the success sections we shall examine the motion of spectra of diatomic molecules and from the interact valuable information about their properties. Rotation spectra, the rotational motion of a diatomic molecule can be visualized as a rotation or a rigid body about its center of mass, illustrated in figure 5. The center of mass lays in the axis connecting the plate and the angular momentum associated with the rotation is a vector passing through the center of mass of the axis of rotation perpendicular to the internuclear axis. Rotation about the internuclear axis itself is negligible. Figure 5 The rotational inertia or moment of inertia about the axis of notation due to the nuclei is I equals mu multiplied R sub zero to power where R sub zero is the equilibrium separation of the nuclei and mu is the, the reduced mass of the system. As I've proven with the caption to figure 5, the rotational energy is classically e sub r equals L to power divided 2 multiplied i, where L is the angular momentum of the system about the axis of rotation. Continuation of the magnitude of the angular momentum gives L to power equals r multiplied r plus 1 multiplied h bar power to power within the rotational quantum number r equals 0, 1, 2, etc. So that e sub r equals h bar to power divided 2 multiplied i multiplied r multiplied r plus 1 formula number 1. Successive rot rotational levels will be separated in energy by formula number 2. The quantity h bar sub h bar to power divided i for the typical molecule has a value of about 10 to minus 4 power electron volt to 10 to minus 3 power electron volt, so little energy is needed to raise a molecule to an excited rotational state. At room temperature, the example, the translational thermal energy of the molecule is 2.3 multiplied 10 to minus 2 power electron volt so that ordinary collisions can transfer to necessary energy of excitations. If the molecule has a permanent electric dipole moment, as do all diatomic molecules that do not have identical nuclei, potential emission and absorption spectra may be observed. The emission of radiation is due to the rotation of the electric dipole and the absorption of radiation is due to the interaction of this dipole with the electric field of the incident radiation. For electric dipole radiation, the allowed transitions between states are given by the selection rule analogous to the, the four orbital angular momentum in atomic transitions, namely delta R equals plus minus 1. The spectral wavelength lambda follow from formula number 2 and delta E sub R equals H multiplied mu. That is H bar square divided I multiplied R equals H multiplied C divided lambda or 1 divided lambda equals H bar divided 2 multiplied P multiplied I multiplied C multiplied R formula number 3.
in which r is the quantum number of the upper rotational state. With delta r equals plus minus 1, the separation between spectral lines in terms of replicable wave lengths, then this delta 1 divided lambda equals h bar divided 2 multiplied p multiplied i multiplied c, a constant. This is illustrated in figure 6. Measurements of the separation gives the value of i, the rotation inertia of the molecule. Then from this we can estimate the value of the equilibrium intertinkular separation r sub zero. In the case of HH chlorine, for example, we find h bar divided 2 multiplied p multiplied i multiplied c equals 2079.4 meter minus 1 power, which gives i equals 2.6. 6, 6 multiply 10 to minus 47 kilogram multiplied meter square. From the now masses of H and chlorium we then obtain R sub 0 equals 1.07 multiply 10 to minus 10 power meter as a measure of the separation of the atoms in the nuclei, in the molecule. Poor rotation spectra fall on the extreme infrared or microwave regions the corresponding wavelength lambda being about 1 mm to 1 cm. An example is shown in figure 6. Diatomic molecules with identical nuclei, like oxygenium second, having the no permanent electric dipole moment, do not exhibit pure rotational spectra. Figure 6. Next, vibration rotational spectra. The nuclei do not maintain a fixed separation of course as we assumed previously so that the molecule is not like a rotating rigid body except in approximation. Indeed, the rotational inertia I changes from the value assumed previously when the molecule rotates because of the stretching of the internuclear distance. Also, the nuclei vibrate about some equilibrium separation and this vibrational motion is quantized. Let's is us now now consider the vibration motion. For a given electron configuration, we have a potential energy curve whose minimum is at an equilibrium separation r sub zero. Near r sub zero, the curve is nearly a parabola, so that the small oscillations are simple harmonic. The energy of such oscillations is quantized to satisfy formula number four, with the vibration quantum number v equals zero, one, two, three, etc and where the classical vibration frequency is mu sub zero. Note that the energy levels have the equally spaced and that there is a zero point energy one half h multiplied mu sub zero. The separation h sub mu sub zero equals 0 0.04 electron volt for natri chlorium and because the association energy is about one electron volt. There are approximately 20 vibrational levels in the potential well. Actually, as the energy rises, the potential energy curve becomes unharmonic so that the levels are not equally separated but get somewhat closer to one another. The rotational levels are spaced much closer still. As we saw earlier, they are being about 40 rotational levels of natri chlorium and about 50 of natri or H chlorium between each pair of vibrational levels. In the molecule like H chlor or natrium chlor has a permanent electric dipole moment at the equilibrium internuclear separation, it will exhibit vibrational emission and absorption spectra due to the oscillations in this electric dipole moment arising from the oscillations in the internuclear separation. The selection rule for electric dipole transitions is delta M. V equals plus minus 1, so that delta E sub V approximately equals H multiplied mu sub 0. The resulting spectral lines lead to the infrared between 8000 angstrom and 50000 angstrom for most molecules. The atomic molecules with identical nuclei do not have vibrational spectra because they have no electric dipole moment and any nuclear separation. In a vibrational transition, the molecule may also change its rotational state so with vibrational changes 
rarely result in combined vibration rotation spectrum. The vibrational transition determines the wavelength region of the spectrum and the rotation transitions determine the separation of the lines. The spectrum consists of a band of lines as a figure 7. Among the interesting results that can be obtained from the analysis of vibrational states and spectra are the relative abundance of nuclear isotopes. The frequency of vibration mu sub 0 equals 1 divided 2 multiplied p multiplied square root from c divided mu depends on the mass of the atoms in the molecules through the reduced mass mu. If in a sample of hydrogenium flow molecules, for example the isotopes chlorium 35 and chlorium 37 are each present, then the vibrational frequencies and resulting energy levels will be slightly different for two types of molecules. See figure 7. The spectral lines consequently will be shifted with the respect of to one another and from a measurement of spatial spectral intensities we can obtain the relative evidence of the isotopes chlorium 35 and chlorium 37. Figure number 7. In somewhat related ways we obtain experimental evidence for the finite zero-point energy of a solita.